This video is about a stone circle in Dartmoor National Park. Dartmoor is special because it's full of Neolithic archaeology. To understand why Dartmoor has so many standing stones, stone circles, stone rows, we first have to understand what normally happens to ancient stone monuments. And to do that, we're going to build a cake. 10,000 years ago, England had bedrock and topsoil. The first Neolithic people to come here leave nothing but flint nappings and stone tools. Over thousands of years, flooding covers the area with silt and clays. Now, in the late Neolithic, people build a stone row and a stone circle. And by the time of the Bronze Age, people have settled down in circular stone huts. The soil from this period contains lots of domestic waste, charcoal from fires, animal bones, broken pottery. These people may also bury their chief in the stone circle, covering him with a mound. Each passing century leaves new deposits of waste, demolition and construction rubble, more pottery, more animal bones, and over centuries and centuries, it builds up. When the Romans arrive in Britain, they demolish everything, including the stone monuments. In later years, they build a town with square buildings and roads, and the phases keep coming. The Roman Empire falls, the Anglo-Saxons come and go, the medieval period, Tudor, Georgian, and Victorian, each phase burying the previous one under new layers of soil and rubble. Eventually, an archaeologist comes along and digs a hole, revealing a cross-section of the layers. Archaeologists call this stratigraphy. In the oldest layers, a shard of Neolithic flint can still be seen. Above it, nothing remains of the stone monuments. And this is typical for England, where there have been so many phases of human settlement that stone monuments have either been recycled or torn down or used in other building projects. But not in Dartmoor. Here's what a Dartmoor cross-section would look like in the modern day. It's a landscape frozen in time. How? Why didn't the Romans settle this area? Why didn't the Anglo-Saxons come? The medieval farmers and lords? Why is Dartmoor still empty to this day? Because by the end of the Bronze Age, humans had cut down all the trees. And because Dartmoor is an upland with lots of rainfall and precipitation, this led to soil erosion, the formation of bogs and marshes, and to this day, most of Dartmoor can't be cultivated. The soil is too acidic and the growing season too short. The upside is that all those stone monuments are still sitting on their original surface. Dartmoor has over 230 circular stone monuments. Some are big, some are small, some are perfect, some are wonky, some are double circles, some are concentric rings. With so many ancient stone circles, you'd think we know a lot about why they were built and how they were used, but we don't. It's not like a site like Stonehenge where we've been studying it deeply for decades at this point. I mean, Stonehenge also has some really obvious clues about how it was used. The whole site is built to align with two solstice events, the summer sunrise and the winter sunset. That's a clue about at least one of the things that Stonehenge was used for. But these Dartmoor stone circles, they don't leave obvious clues, which is why whenever someone finds something new, that's reason to be excited. And I am excited because I might have found something new. I was visiting a site called Hound Tor. Dartmoor's famous for these weird rocky outcroppings called tors. They kind of look like little stone nipples because they're always at the top of a hill and they poke out and stick up into the sky. And Dartmoor's got a lot of them and they have cool names like Sheep's Tor and Laughter Tor and Hound Tor. Just a few hundred yards from Hound Tor is a stone circle. And in the middle of that circle is a kist, a stone-lined box that would originally held human remains. Now, when you stand in the middle of that circle and you look to the southeast, there are four tors on the horizon. From left to right, they are Hay Tor, Saddle Tor, Ripon Tor and Top Tor. So I was standing in that circle, looking out towards the first Tor, Hay Tor, which has the two little peaks. And I noticed a stone about a hundred yards away, poking up out of the gorse bushes. And this stone was perfectly aligned with the Tor behind it. It's difficult to see here, so here's a closer view. There was something about the stone, maybe it was the way it seemed to just poke up perfectly as if it was just touching the tour behind it in the distance, it made me wonder if someone had put it there deliberately. Maybe the same people who used the stone circle thousands of years ago. Of course, it could just be a natural coincidence. There just happens to be a stone in the right place. So which is it? Cultural stone or a natural stone? 
What we really need is a testable prediction, something we can look for that would support either the cultural hypothesis or the natural hypothesis. Can you think of something we could do to test between these two ideas? Well, you could predict that if someone placed a stone in front of the first tor, they might have placed stones in front of the other three tors as well. So let's test that to start. I started walking towards the second tor and I immediately noticed a large, long stone lying on the ground. Now for context, Dartmoor does have a lot of standing stones that have fallen over in time. So it's not unreasonable to suggest that this stone may have once been standing. But without knowing where it stood, how can we know whether it was originally aligned with the tor on the horizon? All right, let's say that you are in the stone circle and my nose is the tor on the horizon. And this pen, this is the stone lying on the ground. Now, if this stone had originally been standing in alignment with the tor and it had fallen some way, let's say this way, then this end of the stone should still be aligned with my nose. Or if the stone had been lying the other way and had fallen like this, then the other end of the stone should be aligned. But if the middle of the stone is aligned with my nose, that would suggest that this was never aligned with the tor on the horizon. So this is a testable prediction that we can go and look for. When I stand at the far right end of the stone, my head and shoulders are perfectly aligned with saddle tor in the background. But when I stand at the other end of the stone, I'm completely off the alignment. So this is consistent with a fallen stone that was once aligned with the tor. Doesn't prove it, but it's consistent with that. I then went to the other two tors to the right, searching for alignment stones, just like the other two, but the whole area was covered in thick gorse bushes, which are these prickly spiny bushes, and I couldn't get to the places I needed to be to look for stones. And because I didn't find those stones, I feel really uncertain. If these stones were deliberately placed, that would be really important because it would tell us that some Dartmoor circles are similar to Stonehenge in that they map something on the horizon. Like they're both honoring something in the distance, but what they're honoring is quite different. But all of that rests on whether this stone was deliberately placed or it's just a rock in a field. And I don't know how to distinguish between those two things. So I guess at this point, it's time to call in a professional. You might have a, an enclosure of the Tor three and a half thousand BC, then get the Cairn Circle, probably early Bronze Age. Yeah, it wouldn't be direct evidence. People would have been on this landscape all the time and they would have been using stones. So it's quite possible this could have been moved. Like most places on Dharma, there's a whole load of things going on archaeologically in the same area. This is Dr. Lee Bray. He's the lead archaeologist for the Dartmoor National Park Authority. And he's also lived near Dartmoor his entire life. So he's the perfect person to talk to about this. So luckily, Lee has a ton of experience distinguishing between natural stones and cultural stones on Dartmoor. Dartmoor's got a lot of stones. So here are four things he pointed out to me that support the idea that this stone was deliberately placed. So to you, this mimics the shape of, of Hator a bit? I think it's a pretty good fit. There, there's something there's something parallel in that. I mean, it's not a perfect fit. It's a, you know, a possibly just a, a, a natural rock or one that they found that looks similar. But that's quite striking, I think. To you, the, the little point to the right lines yeah. up the, the Hator peak on the right? Yeah, it, it, it does look... It's not completely different. And we are missing, I guess, from that profile, we're missing Hator Rock itself, the big bit that sticks up on the left. But we don't know what was important to the people who may have put that stone there, who built the cairn store. It might be that that rock outcrop on the right is more significant for some reason. That's sort of the way we have to think. We have to try to keep an open mind. It might just be coincidence, but it's enough to, to want to continue to look at it, isn't it? Looking in that landscape around, there isn't a great deal of stone there, which is interesting and which may well strengthen the case that these stones are deliberately put there. It's not like some areas of Dartmoor that are just covered in rocks. You know, it's, it's not like that at all. There are a few stones scattered around. So, so that was one thing. We know that these features, like the tours, are important and significant in some way because we have these features called core cairns which are natural outcrops of rock that have 
artificial piles of stone around them. So we know that people thought these rock outcrops, had, they had some significance to them. Whatever that was, we don't know. My, my family and I, we do sometimes sit and just talk about what people thought tours were or why they were important. And some of the best ideas, I think my, my brother said that maybe they thought it was like a well or a spring of rocks, you know, coming out of the ground and this and that. Yeah. Whatever they thought, um, yeah, it must have been cool. There's, I mean, it's an interesting observation that I think that we have examples back in the early 19th century of people talking about tours and wondering who built them. So it's not a big leap to go back into prehistory and think, well, what were they thinking about these tours? Are they something they thought was constructed? Are they? Did they think the ancestors built them? Or, you know, as a monument? We, we just... And that, you therefore can understand perhaps why they did things like pile stones around them uh, or incorporate or refer to them with their monuments, you know. We do see this sometimes. We do see monuments that appear to mimic what's going on on the skyline. There are a cluster of cairns, these sort of early Bronze Age, so about 2000 BC. Uh, mounds of stone is what they are, basically, piles of stone. And if you looked at those, stood at a certain angle and sort of looked north, they looked exactly like the distribution of tours on the horizon again, looking at tours. So that looked to me, and nobody's really done any work on this, so it could be that, um, you know, there are a lot more of these that we're not, we're not seeing or we haven't noticed. On the other hand, Lee also pointed out some things that would cast doubt on deliberate placement. So, so that was one point I thought, oh, yes, there's something in this. The thing acting against that is the shape of the stone. Usually our standing stones look um, slab-like, if you like, or they look like pillars or posts. Um, so whether that just means they're using a rock that was there anyway, that just happened to look like what was on the distance, or they've selected that rock and brought it in and put it there, it's hard to say without excavation. Lee pointed this out to me in an email. He said, there's no other example on Dartmoor of a stone circle with external alignment stones. Like it's not saying, oh, I think I found a new stone row. There's a lot of stone rows in Dartmoor that would not be unprecedented, but this stone circle would be unprecedented. And this applies to any site really, but we should still point it out. The human brain likes to see patterns. The human brain wants to find something. So what do you think? At this point, you've seen as much evidence as I have. Do you think this is a cultural stone deliberately placed or a natural stone, a coincidence? For me, I think originally when I left the site, I would have leaned towards coincidence because I was hoping to find those third and fourth stones. I didn't find them. So I'm thinking, ah, there's nothing to this. But after talking to Lee, I don't think it can be dismissed so quickly. If it is a coincidence, there's more than one coincidence, right? Yes, there's a stone aligned with a tour on the horizon, but also, as Lee points out, that stone tapers, and the point of it might mimic that tour in shape. So that would be another coincidence. Also, that stone is rotated in a very specific way. It has a flat face and a rounded face on the back. The flat side is pointed directly towards the Cairn circle. That would also be a coincidence. And like, if it was rotated just a little bit in either direction, that wouldn't be true. As you move 10 paces to the right, there is another stone aligned with the second tor. And unlike the first, this one is shaped like a standing stone. It's slab-like, it's a long monolith. I'm not saying that there's a little boulder that I found there, this is a proper stone. That's also coincidence. Also, both of those stones are at approximately similar distances from the stone circle. That's another coincidence. And also uh, strengthening all of these coincidences is the fact that, as Lee says, there's not many natural stones lying about. Lastly, if you look at the site on Google Earth, I think you could argue this is a prime location to look at tours. There's a lot of tours in Dartmoor, but if I plop you in a random place, you won't always have four of them in one direction with a valley in between you and you standing on a hill, the beautiful vantage point of all of them. 
Like, it's the first thing you notice when you come to this site. If you come to this site with your dad, and he's a little out of shape, and you pause at the Cairn Circle, he's going he's gonna to do something like this. He's going to go, there's a lot of tours here, eh? If he's not Canadian, he might not say it like that. But you could argue the Cairn Circle is here because of the tours. So for these other two stones to appear to have something to do with the tours would also be another coincidence. And again, none of these things individually prove that these stones were put here deliberately. But these are all reasons to not dismiss that idea and maybe eventually to excavate the site properly and check, find out the answer once and for all. And I hope that happens. So you mentioned that you would need to properly excavate these stones to find evidence that they'd been deliberately placed. What would you be looking for in that situation? What we would look for in that situation would be a socket. Is it sat in a hole uh, would be the thing, because that would tell us for sure that someone had dug a hole and then put the, the stone in it and lined it up as they wanted it. Before I wrap this up, there are two developments that I have to tell you about. The first has to do with a second Dartmoor Circle at a site called Maryvale. The stone circle at Maryvale? Um, I've got a photograph somewhere of um, somebody was stood in the middle of the stone circle looking at one of the tours, a uh, little staple tour it's called, and this tour's profile has a little notch in it. And if you stand in the middle of the stone circle at sunset on the solstice, the sun sets in that notch. You know, it has to be deliberate. You know, but and it just makes you wonder how many other alignments like that are there in on, in monuments on Dartmoor. So when I was editing and I heard that story, I realized that I'd never actually checked the Hound Tor stone for solstice alignments. So let's do that. This white line represents the view from the circle through the Haytor stone to Haytor behind it. Now we can rule out the solstice alignments at Stonehenge; those clearly don't work, and we can rule out the midsummer sunset but the midwinter sunrise, that might work on the ground. I hopped into Google Earth, placed myself in the circle, and turned on the sun feature. The sun doesn't rise directly behind Hator, but keep in mind that Google Earth doesn't show the twin peaks of the tour. It's just possible that the sun rides up the slope of the tour until it's framed between the two peaks. You'd have to go there in real life to be sure. The thing that kills me is that the day I went to Hound Tour and did all the filming for this video was December 21st, 2023, 10 a.m. in the morning. So I missed it by four hours, and that really stings. Could have been a better thumbnail. Anyway, that's the first thing. The second thing I want to tell you is something that the Hound Tour Circle has in common with Stonehenge. If you look at Stonehenge at the summer solstice, during the sunrise, outside the circle, you'll notice a standing stone in line with the sunrise. Archaeologists call this the heel stone, and they do believe that it is there to indicate or point to the sun as it peaks over the horizon. And get this, the heel stone is a natural rock. It hasn't been shaped to be rectangular like the rest of Stonehenge. It has a natural taper which comes to a point. Does that remind you of anything? What I'm trying to argue is this Hound Tor site with its potential heel stone outside the circle I'm not sure that this site is unprecedented. There's another stone circle with something very similar happening, and it's quite famous. It's early days, but looking at these three stone circles, Stonehenge, Maryvale, and Hound Tor, I think there's an emerging picture about what stone circles were actually about. A stone circle simply indicates a special place to stand. As in, if we stand here on the right day, we will see something special, something sacred, in the landscape. And you might be thinking, yeah, that works for Maryvale and Hound Tor, where you do have to stand in a very specific place to see the sun go behind a tour in the distance. But this doesn't work for Stonehenge, right? Stonehenge creates its own alignment, doesn't it? That's not quite true. Stonehenge is located at the end of a man-made avenue, and this avenue is also aligned with the two solstice events. Archaeologists have found that this avenue is built on top of glacial rifts natural fissures that would have run in the exact same alignment. So Stonehenge sitting on those fissures, which align with the solstice, is also marking out a special natural spot. 
In short, I don't think stone circles are built to contain a ritual. I think they're built to mark the spot of a natural ritual, a ritual you can only experience if you stand in the right place. This idea is very testable. It makes the prediction that other stone circles should also mark the site of a landscape experience. If you know of any evidence that supports this idea or goes against it, I would love to hear below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.